What's up everybody and Merry Christmas for those that celebrate. It's that time of the year again, 2022 has come to a close and you guys know how big of a New Balance fan I am and I know there's a ton of huge New Balance fans that also follow my channel too. And with such a wide variety of silhouettes and colorways that released this year, I had to come back to give you guys my top 20 New Balance pickups of 2022. And as I say in all these countdown videos, this is purely my opinion and I fully expect everyone to disagree with my choices. So drop a comment down below to let me know what you guys disagree with and what you guys had at the top of your lists. So like I mentioned, there was a ton of releases this year, so a lot of really fire pairs got left off this list. So a couple honorable mentions goes to, for example, the Aura Lee 2002R in yellow, the ALD 550s in both the white leather and the gray suede, the Paperboy Paris Ice Boy 920, and the Teddy Santis 990 V3 in the sea salt colorway. So with that said, kicking off the list at number 20, we have the Kith 990 V3 in the steel blue colorway. Steel Blue and Kith are pretty much synonymous now, so when they dropped this pair, this was a definite must-have in my collection. This pair though came to most people unexpectedly. I know these dropped shortly after the Navy Teddy Santis V3s, and this was probably my biggest L of the year because I didn't get early access for this pair on the Kith app, and I ended up having to pay resale for this pair, but to me at least, I think it's definitely well worth it. It's not the greatest in terms of material quality, but this colorway is just a beautiful colorway and I think it works so well on the V3 model. Moving on to number 19, we have the Teddy Santis 990 V3 in this raw amethyst colorway. Of all the Teddy Santis New Balance 990s to release this year, I gotta say this colorway might be the most unique and the most eye-catching. Yes, it's not the safest and easiest shoe to pull off, but for some reason this weird color combination, it really works on this V3 model. I love the use of the shaggy long-haired purple suede, and in a year that was filled with mostly neutral and earthy tone colorways, this was a definite welcome change from the portfolio and a shoe that I really like. Next up at number 18, we have the Up There 2002R Backyard Legends. So this is the very first New Balance collaboration between Australian-based boutique Up There store with New Balance, and opting for this 2002R, I really like the unique and eye-catching color palette of this shoe. The use of the green with a subtle hit of light blue and the rounded up with these clean white panels gives this shoe a very clean and distinct look that works so well in the summertime. And though they followed it up with a part two version not too long ago, I think this one was the definite winner in my book. Moving on to number 17, we have the Bodega 9060 in the Age of Discovery colorway. So the 9060 is a brand new silhouette from New Balance that released this year. And Bodega's take is easily one of the best colorways to drop. The theming of the shoe is executed so well, with the idea being that it's inspired by the Renaissance, and in typical bodega fashion, they didn't play it safe. Implementing a wide array of materials, textures, I think the shoe really opened up a lot of people's eyes and gave them the appreciation of this otherwise super bulky and somewhat strange looking 9060 model. Moving on to number 16, we have the Kith New Balance 993 in this pistachio colorway. I think I've mentioned this in my past videos before, but the 993 silhouette in general hasn't been my favorite model of choice. But I think in 2022, I've really gained a new appreciation for the model. And I think this pistachio colorway from Kith is a great pair to have in your collection. It's not over the top. There's no Kith branding on this pair at all. But I think the colorway itself is super clean. It's not exactly blue, it's not exactly grey, and it's not exactly green. It's somehow a blend of all three. And sometimes less is more, and I think giving us top quality materials with an otherwise understated shoe, this is a perfect example of how that works. Next up on my list, I have the triple collaboration between New Balance, Japanese retailer Beams, and designer Akio Hasegawa on this 990 V5. So kind of sandwiched between the hype of the V3 and the recent release of the V6, I feel like the 990 V5 has kind of been lost in the shuffle. And this is my favorite colorway of the V5 to release this year. I believe these were only available in Japan, and the colorway of the shoe is inspired by the 1300 CL. And I think it's so seamlessly adopted on this V5 silhouette. This is really one of those shoes where if you know, you know. And for a lot of pure New Balance heads out there, a lot of them were on the hunt for this pair with good reason why. Moving on to number 14 on my list, we have the Teddy Santis New Balance 990 V3 in this marble head colorway. Teddy Santis' Made in USA line made a huge splash this year, and it gave people the opportunity and the options to buy many colorways of very dope 990s. So this one is the marble head colorway, which released alongside the V1 and the V2 as the very first set to release to the public. And the hype for this V3 was through the roof at the time, but hype aside, I think this pair is arguably the best executed Teddy Santis 990 of them all. I love the textual variety, the colorway of this shoe is just so easy to wear, so it's no surprise why a lot of people have this pair high up on their lists as well. 
Moving on to number 13, we have the Joe Fresh Goods 9060 in the Inside Voices Penny Cookie Pink colorway. So Joe Fresh Goods really shook up the New Balance scene by releasing this pair of the 9060. Although there was the more limited blue pair as well, I think this one, which was a bit more widely available, these were definitely my favorite of the two. And as Joe Fresh Goods is probably known for these days, his use of these pastel tones works so well on the 9060 model. Utilizing all the different panels by incorporating changes of material and color, this is the pair that really made me appreciate and love the 9060 silhouette. It's still a very bulky silhouette, don't get me wrong, but the 9060 is extremely comfortable, and with the right outfit, this pair looks fire on foot. Next up on my list, we have the This Is Never That collaboration on the 1906R in the 2022 Downtown Run colorway. So the 1906R is another reinvention of an old New Balance silhouette that they reintroduced this year. Similar in many ways to the 2002R, the 1906R has a bit more of a sportier appearance to it. And this limited edition collab with South Korean retailer This Is Never That is a great example of how well it could work. I know some people don't like the vintage touches on this shoe, but I think it looks great. And the model itself is very comfortable as well. It's just as comfortable as the 2002R with arguably a lighter weight upper. And ever since I picked up this pair, I've added a handful of general release colorways to my collection too. Next up at number 11, we have the Kith 990V3 Daytona. So earlier this year to celebrate Kith's 10 year anniversary, Ronnie Feig released four different 990s, but each of them were inspired by previous Kith New Balance releases. So for this one, this adopted the iconic Daytona colorway, and I think it works so well on the V3. This is such a great summer shoe, with a stark contrast of the blue in comparison to the white panels. I think it's really eye-catching. And I think to the general public, this one might have been the most sought after among the four pair pack. And with a shoe that looks this good, honestly, I can't blame you guys. And now we're at the halfway point at number 10. So leading off the top 10 on my list, I have the Jound New Balance 990 V3 in this Montreal exclusive colorway. This might be a bit of a hot take. I know a lot of people have this pair in their top three, but hear me out first. So I definitely think this is a great colorway. This shade of brown is so nice in person. And in typical Jam collaboration fashion, they don't do over the top. They make sure the shoes that they give us are very wearable and very versatile. And for those that aren't aware of how these were released, these were only available to purchase in Montreal, which is the founding city of Jam. So I totally am okay with that. I think it's great to give back to their home city, but because of the limited nature of this shoe, that's why the resale prices for this pair are sky high. Do I think it's worth the resale price? Probably not, but if you're able to get a decent deal on this shoe, I wouldn't hesitate because this pair in real life is super nice quality and it's a great color too. Moving on to number nine, we have the MJC Paperboy Paris New Balance 991. So this pair might be the most limited of all the 20 pairs in this list. These were exclusively available in Paris, and it was only available if you purchased a copy of the All Gone 2022 book, and even if you purchased the book, you weren't guaranteed a pair. A limited number of golden winning tickets were inserted into the books, and you didn't know if your book had a ticket until you bought one and opened it up. But putting aside the whole limited nature of this shoe, the 991 is utilized so well on this color palette. When I think of the 991, I usually think of more reserved and understated colorways, but by incorporating these loud splashes of pink suede on this pair, it gives it more of a playful and lighthearted look. Moving on at number eight, we have the Aimé Leon Dor New Balance 991 in this tan leather colorway. So I know in my original reviews that I posted of both this one and the gray suede pair, my original thought was that I liked the gray suede pair, but after wearing these for months now, I've really grown to appreciate and love this tan leather pair. This really has much more of a unique flavor to it, and I think it looks so stylish and so in line with ALD's sense of style. And this being a made in UK model, the materials are just absolutely beautiful. When I rock this pair, it really has this classy and mature vibe to it, which I love. And this is one of those sneakers that you can definitely dress up without standing out in the crowd in a bad way. Next up at number seven, we have the Essence collab on the 2002R in this corduroy colorway. So Essence is a Montreal based retailer and this limited edition 2002R released with zero hype and with zero heads up at least to me on sneaker websites and blogs. So their take on this 2002R silhouette is so well done. By incorporating these corduroy panels on this shoe, it really gives us a unique spin on the 2002R and in a market where there's so many different 2002R colorways, being able to be creative and be unique is kind of tough these days. But I think Essence did a really really solid job. And I know this might be a bit of an unpopular opinion, but the light purple colored laces, to me at least, really sets it off and takes it to that next level. So now we're at number 6, and at number 6 we have the Paperboy Paris Beams New Balance 1500 in this Ice Boy colorway. 
So this is another one of those triple collaborations with Paris-based cafe Paperboy Paris and Japanese retailer Beams. And this Ice Boy project released alongside a 920, but to me, the 1500 was the star of the show. Done in mismatching fashion, the left foot and the right foot are different, but they feature similar color schemes of light gray, dark gray, and light blue. And I know mismatching sneakers can look a bit corny, but I think the way they did it was done quite tastefully, and it's subtle enough that you're not gonna look goofy wearing this pair. Next on the list at number five, we have the YCMC New Balance 990 V3 in the Nimbus Cloud colorway. This at first glance is a very simple and very understated shoe, but to me the devil is in the details. By incorporating suede on this upper, when you see it in hand, it really has much more of a luxurious and classy feel compared to the Teddy Santa's Sea Salt V3, which looks similar at first glance, but by incorporating the suede, it doesn't nearly have that same dad shoe look that the Teddy Santa's pair has. And the color palette of the shoe is very wearable, obviously, and I love the variety of laces they give us. So my personal favorite were these tan laces, which I think complements the dark brown panels and the cream on the midsole so well. At number four on my list, we have the Kith New Balance 990 V4 in this United Arrows and Sons colorway. So of the four 990s that Kith released earlier this year, this V4 was my favorite of the pack. I know the V3 gets all the shine these days, but the V4 I think is being underrated now. And of those four Kith colorways, I was the most excited for the United Arrows and Sons adopted on a more comfortable V4 model. I've always loved that colorway, and in fact, I own the original Kith 997 in the same colorway too. And even though it's so similar to this 990 V4, I had to have this pair too, because the V4, let's face it, is just that much more comfortable. And now we're at the top three. So rounding up the top three, at number three, we have the Joe Fresh Goods New Balance 993 in this performance art pack in the Sage colorway. So Joe Fresh Goods released three pairs of 993s earlier this year. All were done in the similar pastel tones with these dark cream hits. And while the pink and the blue were all solid colorways, this green or sage pair really won my heart the most. This shade of green in real life is so, so nice. It's nice and bright, but it's not overly in your face and vibrant, which means this is gonna be a shoe that I can pull off a lot easier. And don't get me started on the comfort of the 993 in general. This might arguably be the most comfortable New Balance silhouette of them all, and that's just one of the reasons why I have this rank so high on my list. So next up, as the first runner-up, at number two on my list, I have the Salehi Bembury New Balance 990 V2 Sand Be The Time. So in Salehi Bembury's history with New Balance and his collaborations in the past, he's known for translating scenic scenes onto silhouettes in very wild and zany and very creative ways as well. So this pair is no exception. This time, however, he adopted a Made in USA 990 V2 silhouette. And like I mentioned in the review for this shoe, this is really an unexpected color combination and somehow he makes it work. And similar to what I've said in other pairs in my list in this video, the thing I love most about this pair is really the mix of textures and materials that really gives it a creative look and a lot of visual interest. And I know the V2 silhouette to me at least isn't my favorite of the 990 series, but the fact that this colorway is so nice and how well it's executed, I had no choice but to place this at number two. And now we're left with one. So after a countless number of pairs that I picked up through the year, so many reviews that I posted for you guys, it all comes down to this pair. My favorite New Balance pickup of 2022 goes to the Jound 990 V3 in this olive and black colorway. So although these dropped months ago, I feel like a part of me already knew once I got these in hand that these would be in my top one or two New Balance pickups of the year. I know it's not the most creative collaboration and it's not overtly branded or anything like that, but I think the subtlety of the shoe is one of the selling points of it as well. This beautiful shade of green that they utilize on this pair, it's so eye-catching. It's a good mix of vibrant, but it's not obnoxiously loud. And I really like this understated black New Balance end logo on the sides, which really stands out against this green backdrop. Some people might disagree and call this a lazy collaboration, but with a mix of hype, quality of materials, colorway of this shoe, and the wearability and comfort, this is why I have this one ranked as number one on my list. So that wraps up my top 20 New Balance sneaker pickups of 2022. Once again, this is entirely my personal opinion. So feel free to agree, disagree. However you feel, drop a comment down below. Let me see what your list looks like and let's talk about it. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check out my Twitter account at sean.go, and visit my website at seangoca So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for your continued love and support, especially for those that tune into my New Balance reviews. And I'm sure there's going to be a great year ahead in 2023 for New Balance. So I personally can't wait. 
So stay subscribed to my channel, turn on those notifications, and I'll catch you guys all in my next New Balance video.